Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Rathgaber, the head of school and CEO of One Schoolhouse. I'm taking Sarah's spot today, um, and I am joined by Kareen Dadini, our assistant head of school. Hi, Kareen. Hey, Brad. Happy to be with you all today. So, Kareen, today we get to talk about actually something that you and I have talked about, well, for as long as you've been on the team at One Schoolhouse, which is how do you think about intentionally onboarding a faculty using a learning management system? So uh, we think that there are some really fun nuggets in here that could be super helpful as you think about how to onboard faculty at your schools. So today's topic, powering onboarding via your LMS. On our blog is that blog post by Liz Cates, powering onboarding with your LMS. Next week's webinar, we're gonna talk through how I solved it. Heads talk through thorny situations. We know that August in schools, this gives you a little bit of a preview of where we're going next month with our communications. We know that August in schools is all about problem solving and often fast problem solving when you have incomplete information. And so that'll be our focus all next month. Do remember if you have students that are interested in One Schoolhouse courses or you have a need for One Schoolhouse courses, please do uh, reach out to us. Um, some of these courses are starting to fill up quickly. This is in this kind of first post-COVID world. I don't know if we can call it, quite call it that yet. They're in second COVID world. <laughs> um, uh, we're still trying to learn exactly where schools' needs are. And so the earlier that we have some of these conversations, the better. We know that we're already having lots of conversations with schools around schedule conflicts, needing some flexible learning options for their students, some unexpected challenges. And to that end, up on the Pulse survey this week, we asked, have you had any faculty departures this summer? Um, we've been hearing a lot about the so-called big quit and know that that's been impacting schools in a very different way um, than we've seen in prior years. It's not common, obviously, for schools to lose faculty members over the summertime, but it seems to be more and more common. And the early results are starting to uh, bear that out. Um, so this is the early results of the Pulse. We'll share the final results when we come in on Sunday. Um, but only 20% of folks have seen zero departures uh, and 24% have seen four or more faculty departures this summer. Um, that's kind of crazy. Actually, Kareen, do you want to start there? Any, any thoughts on that? I know you've been talking to a lot of schools about what they're seeing with their faculty right now. We have been, Brad, and I think there's a connection here between modifying some of our onboarding practices for faculty and keeping them engaged and helping them feel like this is something they can do. So I think there's a bridge um, mm -hmm. and certainly you can't solve every crisis with your onboarding strategies, but there might be a few that will lower the nerves and help people feel settled and committed to your organization sooner. Mm, that's really good. And Kareen, my guess is too, you'd, you'd agree that not only that, but if you have faculty who may have to be onboarding at different points and you can't just assume that they're going to be in the three days before the rest of the faculty comes to campus in August type thing, um, then you're really gonna wanna think about using your learning management system intentionally um, to make sure that culture, et cetera, um, comes through. That's so true, Brad, because we know that we have the original plan and this is true for almost everything we do in schools. And we do something really well the first time through. And then when we have to run cleanup, whether it's students or parents or new teachers or new administrators, Oftentimes we're just racing to catch our breath and try to make sure they get their computer and can log onto the internet and we don't dot all those I's to help them really feel personally engaged and settled. So I think you can put some things into the LMS that can help with that. Great. And I'm going to add one other thing here that this is kind of a takeaway that I hope folks think about too. And I'll put it right here at the beginning. And that is if you're using your learning management system for onboarding and not just concentrating on those first couple of days before students return to campus, you can think about your administrative and staff onboarding differently a little bit too. We know that those positions in particular don't have the traditional start times uh, in a lot of cases. So Kareen, I'm gonna jump right in here. Um, I guess 12 years ago, when we started One Schoolhouse, then the online school for girls, I would get the question very regularly, how the heck do you train your faculty to teach online, we can't bring them all together. We, we were very, uh, actually original in this idea that you didn't have to do faculty training in person, that you could do all of that training over the learning management system. 
my guess is folks would be interested in a little bit in kind of where we started with that and then how we think about um, how we think about faculty training through a learning management system. Yeah, and we really had to prove ourselves, Brad, because if you remember, in those early years, some of the subsequent online schools that started didn't believe it, and they brought their faculty together live. And so uh, what we found is that teachers, and you know this, you all work with teachers and have for years, teachers thrive with this sweet spot between structure and flexibility. And of course, that's what online learning is all about and done really well. Online learning allows anyone who's engaging, whether it's a professional development participant who's taking a one week course or a student who's taking a full year course or a teacher who's new to a school, they wanna know what's expected of them and they wanna know how to do it well. And so any structure that you can use that facilitates that is going to lead to better outcomes. And here at One Schoolhouse, some of you have heard us say this in the past, it's never been about the technology. And so while we use the LMS, we're literally just leveraging a platform that we want our teachers to get comfortable in. So there's kind of this meta piece of have the experience of being a student in our learning management system. But more than that, it's about us taking the time to be really intentional and to have our teachers join us from our own starting points. Hmm. And so when you meet a teacher at the front door or there's new teacher orientation the first day of school, it seems kind of contrived to say, let's all read our mission out loud or let's look at our purpose statement and do an activity around it. But that is where you wanna start. And when you have some activities in the learning management system that can really start from those core values and providing meaningful engagement, we find that our teachers almost immediately say, I understand what you're about. Now I get it. Now I see where I fit in, where my values align with your values. And so that is just an immediate inclusive activity because it gives everyone that Velcro of we belong together. We can make this work. So let's pause there for a second before we get into the kind of micro, then how does this work for the to do's and how do I's types of questions. Because the macro question to me is super interesting. One of the things that we know, and I think most schools saw during last school year, is that when asynchronous discussion boards are used effectively, you can get amazing, amazing, amazing contributions, honestly, particularly from your more introverted folks. Um, and, so, uh, and so that seems to me like ripe for a real meaty discussion about mission and purpose and how the school has evolved and the history and all of that. And what you could never do in an hour long meeting about that. Like nobody could have their full voice heard in the same way as they could in something like an asynchronous discussion board. That's so true, Brad. And, you know, especially with adults, there's the marinate factor. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's the fire hose when you're starting school and there's so many logistical things to manage. And those matter, of course, and we'll talk about how to use your learning management to get some of those through. But I think the ability to know that a discussion board is there and maybe see what other folks have posted and come back, it starts to create some community for your new faculty. And it also helps them get to know the administrators a little bit better. You know, we're running with our hair on fire as we get ready to open school, but Right now, I can give you a concrete example. We start training our faculty in April. One Schoolhouse first round of faculty training for next year's teachers begins in April. But like all schools, we continue the hiring process. We continue to train teachers who might be being brought in if we add sections. And so it's fun because we have our main instructional designers who run that training. But, you know, one of them went on vacation for a few days and I popped in to manage a discussion board. And then I got to engage with some of our new teachers and they got to know me a little bit. And so it just, it creates a really authentic space where people can ask questions. They can think about something, they can circle back to it. They can see if others are struggling with the same things or excited, and then maybe create some of those connections to form community in your school. So beyond some of those initial connections to Crean, I know that you really feel strongly that the that organizing in a learning management system or uh, some other some other type of online forum allows you 
to put what you value front and center in front of the teachers too, in a, in a perhaps different way. It allows your values to come through, not just with your purpose and mission, but what you value in the teaching and learning experience of your students too, the competencies that we expect of faculty members and the standards that we have. Can you talk about how like you use the learning management system to bring forward some of those things that are so key to what we strive for in the schoolhouse? Yes. So curriculum mapping is something that we believe in and we model it for our new teachers because what we do is we take our course standards, which is a rubric that uh, we use to design our courses. It's the expectations for course design and development here at One Schoolhouse. And then we have a second rubric that is our teacher competencies rubric. And that is the expectations for the skills and aptitudes of our teachers. We take those two documents and we build a course called Pedagogy and Practice. And teachers who are new to One Schoolhouse complete a timed, facilitated, month-long onboarding in the Pedagogy and Practice course that introduces them, based on the structure of those two rubrics I just described, introduces them to who we are and how we do what we do and what we expect. And so they get really front-loaded here are the expectations and here's what it actually looks like. Mm. And in that pedagogy and practice class, those modules will have virtual field trips into our classes. They'll have guest webinars, like little live videos from some of our teachers about how you create connection in the online space, which is a real value at one schoolhouse or how you build for collaboration or how you handle developing academic maturity. There's, for example, some of our students are younger and need to have more scaffolding for skills. So we have our teachers who are really good at that, providing some resources in there so that new teachers have access to what does this really look like at one schoolhouse. So it's, it's the philosophical research-based values and then the very practical, this is how you're gonna do it. And then in each module, there are two activities where the teachers have a chance to engage with it, ask questions, kind of grapple, struggle with it, push back where it doesn't fit right, and then work through how they're going to bring it to life in their own courses. And that pedagogy and practice course, there's the initial four to five week module, depending on um, what you're being hired to do, but that's a living course. And so we think of teacher training, teacher onboarding, as a full trip around the sun. And as the year goes on, they will return to that course. They will also continue to engage in subsequent modules that allow them to go deeper and gain more skills around our pedagogy and practices. Yeah, you've brought up a couple of additional questions for me, but my, I wanna also remind folks, if you have questions, feel free to put them into the Q&A. Uh, Kareen is happy to dive into them. Um, Kareen, you know, one of the things you sort of referenced there is, beyond the big picture standards and competencies, there's the practical, how do I do this? And the how do I do this doesn't often come up until you have to do it for the first time. And so part of what I think you're saying here and learn, using something like a learning management system is you can then have that category of how do I do X and very quickly show them, have the link over to how they actually do it, how it practically is done, right? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right, Brad. And I'm actually gonna talk toss back to you because you are constantly reminding us about the need to be explicit, particularly with new employees. So could you share a little bit more about how we do that and what you've learned over the years? Oh my gosh, this, that's a really good question, Kareen. You know, in, in the online space, we have found that you have to be significantly more intentional um, than you do in the face-to-face, -face, uh, in a face-to-face -face school setting. I think a lot of folks, um, I think a lot of folks uh, uh, had learned a little bit of that lesson last year, that culture and community don't grow unless you're super, super intentional about growing that culture and community, for example. We used to be able to rely on, you know, seeing parents at a soccer game or something like that, or, or working with our faculty over coffee in the faculty room or any number of other touch points that instead of just taking them for granted as touch points, we can build really intentionally around. And I think that that's something that, you know, if, if I was to go back to a face-to-face -face school and create, I think you'd probably say the same. Um, we'd 
want to bring back, right? Like we'd want to bring back to that setting of we aren't just going to rely on this happening by happenstance. We are going to be intentional about this and we're going to work really hard to make sure that what we value as a community shines through. I think that's so true, Brad. And um, to be fair, you and I have an earlier stopping point than most of the folks on this call, yeah. right? So we have to train our teachers in how to design and build for their students. So we have a, we have a pretty narrow focus. You are a building community and you're bringing people in in a way that still, I think, benefits greatly from in-person time. So in some ways, what we're telling you is take our advice and use your LMS for the types of things that we can use it for, but know that that will actually liberate you to then use your in-person time instead of going over some of the things that might be mind numbing to go over in person, put those in the LMS, make a few quick videos that show people how to do things or a checklist for them on how to get started on a particular task. And then use your in-person time for the more meaningful community building that will really help them feel settled in your building, in your, out on your soccer field, helping introduce them to the folks that are the brain trust at your school, or the strategies for real success as they get going. Yeah, so um, Kareen, that, that brings up another, another thing for me, and that is, you know, it allows for ongoing, I think that's, that's super smart commentary on that. Um, it allows for another thing too, and that is when you have to introduce a new initiative in the middle of the year, you can create resources and structures that allow faculty members to enter at the place that they're at too, right? So I know that you had experience with this last year as we were starting to introduce a number of DEI initiatives with our faculty. Um, can you talk about that and then how that set you up for a new set of expectations for faculty members as we went through the year? Yeah, um, <laughs> so I'm gonna steer off course for just a second here because I have a useful analogy. So a lot of us were camp counselors back in the day, right? And if you're like me, you believe that there's really only one camp game and it's tag. And maybe there's a second camp game and it's hide and seek. And every other thing is either tag or hide and seek. I sort of believe that about training people to do new things too, which is that you have to give them the why, how, what. And you, you can do that in a lot of different ways. But if you use your learning management system to front load the why and the how, then you can help them when they get to the what and you can come alongside them and it really sets you up for that coaching culture. So, um, so in a way here, my, we have lots of different words for things, but this is sort of the old school flipped classroom, right? Put the basics, put the instructions in the learning management system and recognize that there are going to be things that people need right now, and there are going to be things that you need them to have right now, and there are going to be things that they just can't get to. And so, so you can help prioritize with, these are the things that you have to do. Your learning management system has a box you can check that gives a due date. And every time they log in, they're going to see on their dashboard that I need to do this by August 13th. And so maybe it's a safety training. We don't need to watch bloodborne pathogens in person anymore. Maybe that can be online. So, so you can leverage your learning management system to front load some of that stuff so that when you get to the in-person time, you are really coming alongside them and they can come at you with their questions and you're not just delivering, delivering, delivering. That's, that's super smart. And I think our friends over at the National Business Officers Association would say this is a great intersection point for academic leaders to talk with their HR directors at their schools too. Yes. Okay, so can I go back then, Kareen, to my question about um, introducing new initiatives and how- Did I get off on tag? <laughs> Fine, that was a good tangent to get off on. But let's go back to that one about like how you can introduce new initiatives and give folks the space that they need um, and the resources they need at varied levels. I mean, we knew going in that our faculty and our administrative staff were at varied levels um, with DEI work. And so knowing that we wanna meet people where they are, 
a presentation kind of coming out either from a consultant or an administrator about that only can meet so many people, but something like introducing that via uh, a set of resources rather than the resource or the objective um, allows you, uh, I think allows faculty members to feel really comforted and supported too. Absolutely, Brad. Uh, so I will stay on topic. When we introduced our DEIB, this initiative um, this year, one of the things that we knew was really important was that we meet everyone where they were and that we knew those would be vastly different spaces. And we started with that research. So we actually knew what the range of our starting points were. But then we, uh, the second thing that we knew was that people were going to find safety for engagement on in through different, um, different platforms. Mm -hmm. And so we set it, we framed it in our learning management system. So we had several of us who kind of gave the why, how, what, explained why we were doing this, why it was mission aligned work for one schoolhouse, why it was essential to our student program, and then how we intended to support our teachers growth and development in this area. And then they had choices. They had discussion boards in the LMS, they had videos to watch, they had articles to read, they had live office hours to come to, they had designed activities that happened also live. Um, and so, so we used our learning management system to preview what was going to happen over the next several months. And actually this is ongoing for us, but it also gave teachers the space to say, I can see where we're going and to take a little time to recognize maybe where this was going to take their breath away or where they were going to dig their heels in and do some of their own work before they had to engage with us. And what I have found is that as an administrator in a face-to-face -face school, often I would present something. The first time teachers would hear about it would be in a faculty meeting when I was well prepared to talk about it and lead a discussion, but that doesn't meet everyone where they are. There are certain people who are gonna engage really well in that sort of strategy, but there are other folks who are going to um, be able to move through the change cycle in a much different way if they have some breathing room from the outset. Um, and the other thing that putting it into the learning management system and allowing people to engage in an individual way, at least at first does, is it gives you some insights into where they might be. Mm. You can mm -hmm. see in your learning management system, a teacher who spent a lot of time on a page or a teacher who hasn't clicked in or a teacher who's really starting to ask questions. And it allowed us to also reach out individually and, you know, sometimes we found out, oh, my gosh, I've had a child who's been throwing up for three days. That's why I'm not in there. But sometimes we found out, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. This isn't me. I don't know what to do. And then we could come alongside them and help them get started. So I, I love a number of the things you said in there, including that using data and using uh, the learning management system as a whole as a jumping off place to conversations. I can imagine that there may be a couple of folks watching this webinar today that think, oh, but I really like that like hour long conversation on boarding that new faculty member and wanting that. Yeah. And, and I think that's that's clear the message that Kareen is saying here. That just allows those conversations to be significantly richer. It just allows those conversations to go deeper than they ever would have been able to before. Um, and that's where it becomes, I think, exciting when you're really super intentional around it. I think so. And Brad, I've seen you redirect as well. Um, you know, sometimes a, someone posts something on a discussion board and you can see where they're struggling or they're stuck, or maybe they're going to send the conversation in a direction that isn't where most of the rest of the folks in the discussion really are. Right. And so I've seen you reach out to someone one on one and start that conversation that really helps them redirect, work through whatever they're struggling with, or maybe they're excited about something that's just totally tangential or they're further along than the rest of the folks. And it allows you to really meet them where they are. People learn differently, right? <laughs> Whether they're students or adults. So let's meet them where they are and try our best to, uh, to help with that. 
Kareem, we have a couple of questions that have come in in the last five minutes or so. Folks, if you have additional questions, please feel free to put them into the Q&A. Um, the first one I think we hit on, but, but let's just be specific about it here. At my old school, the process for submitting a work order for a non-emergency repair was something that everyone forgot from the opening of school meetings by the time they needed to know it. Could that be something that's like a page in the LMS? That's perfect. That's a great question. Absolutely. We have in our learning management system, I already described the pedagogy and practice course, but we also have a course called faculty room. And it has just kind of the nuts and bolts of doing your job. It has things like the link to the calendar, how to, well, we, we don't submit work orders, <laughs> but if we did, it would be in there. Um, it has things like how to contact beta if a student is struggling. Mm -hmm. It has outlines for processes. If you're an AP teacher, how do you set up AP classroom? So yep. it's very nuts and boltsy and it's actually organized. There are two different ways you can find what you're looking for. So I highly recommend creating some nuts and bolts pages in your learning management system because faculty will know. They want their students to know to go there when they're looking for something and they're gonna to know to go there as well. And we also use it for a lot of submissions. Mm. And so when teachers have to submit their syllabus for next year, map out their courses, all of that stuff comes in through our learning management system, which makes it way easier for us on the admin side to track it and way easier for faculty to know what they have to do when and where to go to put it. Everybody There's never a question about how do I turn something in. Yeah, everybody's working in the same space. And again, they have the meta experience of sort of being a student in that experience too, and understanding how clear directions must be in a learning management system, et cetera. Okay, second question that came in, um, does one schoolhouse have anything that supports teachers in comment writing? Um, wondering about a module on good comments with some examples across di disciplines, some examples that include struggling and high achieving students. I know this is a space that every school works on at some point during the year with their faculty. Can you talk a little bit about how we think about that, Karine? Yes, so this is a good one to go back to what you were mentioning earlier, Brad, where there are tiered levels. So you have faculty members who are wonderful writers and know exactly how to write really constructive and healthy comments. So all they need to know how to do is know how to post those. You know, we use Salesforce, we need our teachers to just have a quick list of instructions about where do I put my narrative reports and when are they due. So you've, you've got those high flyers. Then you've got new teachers who maybe don't know what's expected. Maybe your expectations are different from their prior school. And so they need a little more training. For those teachers, that page has a lot of information and video screencasts posted, but it also has a link to book with one of our instructional designers to just talk one-on-one -on -one about how do I do this, walk me through this. Um, and so that's a useful tool. And then there's, there's another layer in that module for teachers who don't write good narratives. And when we proofread our narrative comments, sometimes there'll be a red flag and we'll fix it in the moment but then one of the instructional designers will go back to that teacher. We don't let it go. Go back to that teacher and say, hey, here's a link. Go to this page in the learning management system. Read through these. And then in some, I think on that one, it might be a discussion board where they can ask questions. But there could also be the link to the instructional designer's calendar to book yep. a meeting. So, so just always having that. Meet them where they are, but have a plan for follow-up if they need additional support. That's great. And again, that makes the human connection time so much more valuable. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, folks, we have now hit 1230 on the East Coast. And so Kareem, thank you so much for adding your thoughts in here today. Um, thank you everybody for joining us. As always, this webinar will be up on our webinars pages uh, and uh, feel free to pass it along to colleagues once it gets there later today. Thanks, Kareem. Great to see you all.